Hello, I'm Brett Martin from Zenata Consulting, and this is a tutorial on settings in Zoho Books taken from our 2022 webinar. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe below. Thank you so much and enjoy. To access settings, you will go up to the settings gear in the upper right hand corner. Now, when you click on that, it's going to break a nice drop down down so you can kind of go anywhere to get a quick access to the settings. If you do choose one of the settings, though, you'll notice that menu jumps over the left hand side and pretty much all those same things are there. And these kind of expand out from there. So it starts with your organizational profile. You put in your company name, your industry, the type of business you are, your street address. Um, all that kind of basic information. Uh, you can add your email services, kind of important. You go ahead and configure email preferences uh, in there as well. Set your fiscal year, are you on a cruel cash basis? All the basic things that you want to have when setting up your company. And if you move on down to opening balances, this is where after you kind of have set up all of your accounts, you've got everything in, uh, perhaps you want to establish those opening balances. So you're bringing everything in from January 1st, 2022. Um, you clearly have opening balances at that point in time. You're starting there. So you can go ahead and set those for all of your different account types. So there's assets, expenses, bank accounts, liabilities, equity, income. You can do all of those. Um, nice way to make sure everything's clean when you get that set up. Uh, next, you can set your user roles and permissions. Um, when setting this up, uh, if you were to go invite a user here, um, you can kind of go ahead and uh, click in there. If you're using Zoho One, it's going to take you to the admin panel to set that up. If you're inside of Zoho Books, it's really just going to have it right there for you as well. Uh, you also have your roles here. And this is, you know, you've got admin staff. Uh, staff assigned customers only timesheets. This is the way of limiting it. Oftentimes companies, you'll want to let people have access to maybe just see invoices. Um, so you can kind of create a, you know, a profile that really kind of limits what people, uh, what people can see. So, you know, you can go ahead and create a new role and, you know, all of the detail. Can they see the customers and contacts? Maybe they can only view them, edit, create, delete, uh, assign ownership. Same with items, all the banking. This is the one that most people will turn off is they'll, they'll want to give people access maybe to books, but they don't need to see how much money's in the bank or who's been paid or, or those kind of things as well. Uh, so you can basically limit a person's access um, by just going through and pretty much every part of Zoho Books, you can kind of adjust their access accordingly when you're uh, when you're going through and setting that up. Uh, moving then down the list next, we have warehouses. Um, you, if you're using Zoho inventory, you're probably going to be running your warehouses out of there, but you also can uh, run them out of books and you can enable multiple warehouses. You can have up to five different warehouses. Uh, oftentimes people do this. Maybe they consider a truck a warehouse and you've got goods on there as well. So this is where you will set up all your warehouses and we could do an entire video on that. Probably should, Tyler. Um, and then also we've got our preferences. Uh, this is a deep one when you move down to preferences. This is really setting up what you want for almost every aspect of uh, Zoho Book. So you've got general preferences asking you what modules you want to see. You can set all of those up as well. Um, you've got overall branding preferences. This is where you can put your logo in and kind of put your overall theme for, for everything. You can set up a custom domain. So instead of going to books.zoho.com or zoho.com slash books, you can, um, you know, for the portal that people want to go to, you can set up something like books.zanata.com slash portal. And then people can, if they're accessing your overall portal, they can do so uh, using your domain. Uh, you also can go ahead... <clears throat> And define, you know, what are your customers? Are their customers usually businesses or individual? Um, do you want to enable credit limits? Uh, kind of placeholders that you're going to use for uh, various things as you go forward. You can have some field customization, adding custom fields. You can put in custom buttons. Uh, you can add additional related lists. Those are what sit over here on the side. So you have that ability to kind of add in some, uh, some custom things to customize it if it just doesn't have quite the fields that you're looking for. You also can handle the approval process out of here. It gives you a very nice example as to how this works. You can have sales approval, purchase approval, inventory approval. Uh, so nothing can get done without your uh, without it going through the proper channels. So you can't just send an invoice out to somebody without it having uh, actually been approved. 
Uh, you've also got the accountant section. <clears throat> and in here is where you can force things like, I want to have a mandatory code for accounts. Um, I want to have a unique account code for accounts that are created. Um, you know, when you're doing vendor advances, you can set those up. Uh, you also can have journal custom fields as well as chart of account custom fields. And we'll be talking about those in a little bit. You'll see where those custom fields can, can come into play. Um, we already talked a little bit about users, but this is going to kind of give you an overall list of your users. But what you can do is you can add custom fields to those users. So maybe in your user field, you want to have there's different information. You want to know what department they're in or, uh, you know, how, how they're interacting with it. So maybe you want to have something that sets them apart as a, uh, different user. Um, you also can enable transaction numbers. So you can uh, have the number series. So basically it's going to generate a multiple of number series for your transactions. You can set up your prefixes for those things as well. Uh, we touched on this a little bit when talking about the custom domain, but you can have a client portal in here. Customers can come in and they can see their invoices. They can see their POs, all of those kind of things. So you basically can set that up so they can come in and, uh, see what they owe, what you owe them, those kind of things as well. That, of course, on the vendor side is where you will set up, uh, you know, your outstanding uh, bills payable so they can see those as well. Uh, Tyler briefly touched on items. He's going to go into it a little more detail, but in items, you can set the base, what you want for those two decimal places. How are you measuring these inches or centimeters? Are you doing it by weight, kilogram, grams or ounces? Uh, you know, barcode scannings are using... SKUs, ISBN, UPC codes, EANs. You can basically set up what your defaults are. Determine whether or not you want to allow duplicate names. Um, but before you do this, you have to at least have a SKU field so they can identify what the differences are there as well. You can also enable price lists. This is where you can say, if I sell to this person or this company, they get 10% off. If I sell to this company, they're going to get you know 30% off. So you can kind of set those up and have different price lists associated with it as well. Uh, you can also turn on composite items. So when doing your items, what that means is maybe you have a product. We'll do something simple here. You have a candle and that's your end product that you sell. Um, but you also want to, you know, but you want to kind of build that together. Maybe that could, is composed of three different things. Maybe you're doing a bundle. So maybe you could do the glass, the wax, and the wick, make up the candle. You've got those separately. The composite is the candle. That ends up being a finished good. Oftentimes it's, well, I have these four products and I sell them in a bundle. I want to bundle them together. So if you enable that, you can actually build composite items made out of other items in inventory. Um, you could have serial number tracking as well and batch tracking. All of these things could be configured inside items as well. And then moving on to estimates, I'm going to kind of skip over all of these, but basically for estimates, retainer invoice, sales invoice, packages, shipments, all the way down the line, uh, you have the ability to add custom fields, validation rules, bus buttons, and related lists associated with each of those, set up your various terms and conditions. All of that can be here in the overall preferences. The same applies to purchases, uh, the ability to uh, go in and set up various preferences for, in this case, you know, mileage for under expenses, you know, what's your fuel mileage expense, uh, you know, you can add custom fields for vehicles. You can add vehicles in, you can have separate fields, all the same thing kind of going through across the board here as well. Um, bills, again, you can have separate fields for bills, same for recurring payments made, purchase orders, all of these very, very detailed. You can go in and add custom fields. A lot of these are just, let's me have some custom fields. I want to get a little more detail maybe for my reporting down the line. And lastly, you can set up your time tracking for projects, put some more custom fields in, and the same for timesheets. You can determine if you're rounding off maximum number of hours in a day that can be logged. This person's really working a lot. Uh, you know, track time costs for entries, timesheet approvals. You can enable all of that as it relates to time timesheets. The preferences tab is very detailed. And oftentimes people miss this, but you will want to spend some time in there kind of going through it bit by bit by bit and making sure you have that set up exactly as you want. If you're dealing in multiple currencies, you can set that up in the currency tab. You can add new currencies. You can disable or enable exchange rates as well. Uh, if you're doing taxes, which most people are, you can enable sales tax. Uh, you'll notice down here they say integrate with Avalara. 
Um, if you are in multiple states, actually, I think even if you're in one state, because sales tax varies from city to city, county to county, uh, you know, one side of the street can have a different tax than the other side of the street. Uh, Abalera is a third party uh, provider of sales tax data. And if you subscribe to them based upon your the location that you're selling into, it will apply the proper sales tax for you. And then you can add reporting tags. Um, an example of this, they can be on invoices. And so you've got here, the tag name is builder type, or they distributor end user reseller. Uh, maybe you want to, oftentimes we see people that are running personal and business out of the same set of books. So they'll want to tag something as a personal item or a business item. So they can separate those out at reporting at the end. Uh, you can do a lot with these tags to kind of basically, uh, give you that again, detailed reporting at the end of the day. Uh, here is a big one and that is templates. And when you're working in Zoho templates, <clears throat> you will see that they give you a bunch of templates, um, that are pretty much out of the box, um, ready to go. You know, your logo will appear here. All of the information will appear here and you have kind of standard customization across all of them. You can, the, the overall template, you can change the header. Uh, you can change the overall item table, what you want to have, uh, what the total, what the footer looks like, and any uh, annexure that you have at the very end. Um, every single one of these is pretty much the same. They have pretty much the same setup. Maybe there's a few different fields depending on what you're working in. Uh, invoices is the big one. Um, if you are coming out of Zoho CRM, uh, the invoices in there you'll notice are HTML and that gives you a lot of flexibility and you can do heavy customization of what your uh, invoices will look like. Out of the box, uh, Zoho Books does not give you that level of customization. You can basically just do kind of what we talked about, very small changes to the header and the items tables and those kind of things. But if you uh, request that they turn on HTML templates for you, Zoho will do so. So you can do that. And basically it will, uh, you can have that HTML template and basically make it do look and feel any way you would like it to look. Uh, again, most of these are the same. I will note if you go down to checks though, you can set up your overall check registry. They've got a basic template here for that. You can make some adjustments to that as well. But again, these kind of are all the same, just setting up your basic templates. You can spend some time in there. The ones that come out of the box are great. Uh, this just gives you some more options to kind of customize them and tweak them as you will. Uh, if we move on to emails now, boy, are there a lot of emails that you can customize inside of uh, Zoho Books. So just straight on running down to the templates here, you know, you've got user invites, client portal invites, client portal link. Uh, client review notification, project notification, timesheet notification, customer statements. They go on and on and on and on. Every single potential automated email that you would have go out, you have the ability to go ahead and modify it, create it, change it, do all of those kind of things. So uh, it's uh, very deep on the notification, very deep on the emails. And again, depending on how much automation you want to have inside here and notifications, uh, you will want to spend some time going ahead and customizing your emails. Uh, reminders, again, there's a lot you can do here. Let's say you want to automatically remind somebody when an invoice is overdue, you can set that up. I want to send one after it's you know, a week overdue, two weeks overdue, a month overdue. Uh, every basic thing you might want to have on bills, maybe you want to notify yourself that one's due, uh, but you can, uh, you can set up very, very nice reminders. And again, completely customize the emails that are associated with those reminders as well. And then if you're familiar with Zoho CRM, uh, you've got some automation, you can set up workflow rules, you can run custom functions using Zoho Deluge, uh, you can do uh, web hooks. Uh, basically, you can go into more advanced automation using the automation tab. And then web tabs, perhaps you want to pull in something from the outside and display it inside Zoho Books. You can do that. So you've got an outside website you want to pull in. Maybe it's something that has vendor part numbers, one that you work with a lot. And rather than having to go there, you just want it to be right inside Zoho Books. So you can click on that and bring all of that data in as well. And then you've got the developer space. This is what we're talking about with webhooks, connections, shows you your API usage. Uh, you get, you know, so if you're doing things like connecting to a third party source and bringing in data, this is where you live there. That's normally which, what we're brought in for is to kind of set this kind of stuff up for you. Um, but you do have nice third party 
uh, integration that you can bring in here as well. Uh, before I get to online payments, I'm going to skip that and come back. We'll talk a little bit about integrations. Uh, Zoho Books comes with a lot of nice built-in integrations. You've got Aftership, UPS, and uh, the United States Post Office, as well as Easy Post, which is one we, uh, we like a lot. Uh, for your shopping cart side of thing, you can get, bring in Shopify, uh, Zoho Commerce, Magento, Woo. They are all supported from a shopping cart basis, from an e-commerce basis. Uh, they've got connections for Amazon, eBay, Etsy, House. They have all those as well. Um, you can also do SMS immigrations. This is going to be done through Twilio. Uh, and then you've got all the Zoho apps. So uh, all of these Zoho apps, CRM, Begin, Projects, People, Sign, Sales IQ, Subscriptions, Inventory, Expense, Analytics, Click, Desk, Mail, and Campaigns, all can connect into Zoho Books, providing various additional functionality and kind of, uh, you know, uh, cross data. So, you know, in the CRM, uh, we talked about earlier, maybe you want to block it so that, you know, people really don't have access to much in books, but you wanted to show them invoices. Well, if you connect the CRM over to Zoho Books, you can give them zero access to books and still show the invoices over inside of uh, inside the CRM so they can view them there as well. Uh, also, you can handle all of your uh, 1099 filings. So if you are doing 1099s, they use a tax 1099 and yearly, and both of those can help you with your 1099 filings at the end of the year. And then there are a slew of other applications by other vendors that are supported as well. Uh, Slack, Square, we talked about Avalara. Sure Payroll is uh, one of the few payroll services that actually has native journal integration. So if you're running your, your less than 100 employees, five to hundred is the number. Um, they have an extremely cost-effective payroll solution and you can run your payroll through there. It'll all automatically pull into Zoho Books. Your journal entries will be automatically applied. Uh, Zapier, Funbox, Google, and Microsoft. And then lastly, if you're going to make some various integrations, you will need to grab your key and uh, your username. You can go ahead and use that. You will need that for some integrations. And then we'll talk a little bit here about online payments. So big thing a lot of people want to do is they want to collect online payments. So, you know, for credit card, Stripe is the preferred gateway, but you do have many, many, many others. So if you're sending out an invoice, person can just click on the pay online. And if they want to pay by credit card, you can use Stripe. You can use WePay, Forte, Square. PayPal Pro, PayPal Payments Pro, Baintree, Checkout, and WordPay. Uh, Authorize.net is a big one because oftentimes people are using another outside credit card provider. They've cut you, maybe you've cut a special deal. You're not paying the standard 2.9% plus 30 cents a transaction. You really want to stay with your credit card processor. You can use Authorize.net and stay with that processor, and that will fully, uh, fully integrate as well. Um, ACH payments, again, you can collect them through Stripe and authorize.net or Forte. What that is, is basically uh, very, very little fees. Usually it's 50 cents to a couple dollars. And if a person pays you by um, ACH, that money will go from their bank account to your bank account at a much lower fee. Uh, PayPal kind of gives you the best of both um, because if you set things up properly in PayPal, people can pay you by check. If they've set it up, they can pay you by credit card. Uh, they can make PayPal the PayPal transfers. So you also can set up PayPal. And you've also got Ideal um, for Ideal Payments. And again, the only gateway for Ideal Payments is going to be Stripe. So, a lot, And by the way, you're not limited to just one of these. You could actually have Stripe and PayPal and several others and offer all of those options uh, to your customers when, they are, when they're going ahead and doing their payments. Hey, thanks so much for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that subscribe button below so you won't miss any of our videos. Thanks again for stopping by.